Uh, Bertus, can you just tell us what actually led to uh, this order being made in agreement uh, with both parties and exactly what alienation is for those viewers who don't know? Um, yeah, it's, it, there was a few applications that actually um, was brought before this specific application, and um, it stems from a Rule 43 order that was made in 2018, whereby the dad had contact with the children, and then um, the mother was unhappy with about four um, social workers who uh, supervised the contact, and we had to bring an application in March of uh, 2021 to appoint a new social worker and then a reunification process started after that and then uh, the mother w w when the the um, reunification psychologists wanted to extend the contact the mother then arbitrarily just cancelled the contact and said that the dad won't have any contact going further either telephonically or in person um, and then during November, we had to bring another court application whereby the judge then ruled that uh, the order that was granted previously should stay in place. And um, the mother violated that order as well. So we had to go uh, back to court uh, for contempt proceedings. And uh, it was clear that the judge was going to sentence her for imprisonment. And when the matter adjourned, uh, we engaged with the opposition and then agreed on a consent order that should she violate the order, the warrant of arrest is stayed, and um, if she violates the order, then obviously she will have to go and, and, and go to jail. So the mother in question knew, uh, and she'd been in contempt, I think it was for three, or three times, if I understand correctly. Um, so she knew and had a hint that the judge was possibly going to give her a uh, direct imprisonment and so agreed to the order, which means there will be no appeal. Correct. That's correct, yes. Um, that's correct. You know, it's very... Sorry, go on. No, so it's just very unusual that, for me, that... Uh, any court will imprison a mum, is which, what we were talking about, which is why it's such an unusual case. It is, but you know, you must have regard to the fact that the court is the upper guardian of all children. And when these things happen, you know, it, it sort of borders on abuse, on child abuse. Um, and you have to be very careful in these cases. Uh, it's very delicate cases because although you have a mother that may not follow the court order, she might be a good mother in the eyes of the children. So it's it, parental alienation cases is probably the most difficult cases to handle for for lawyers, family lawyers, because of all the dynamics at play. You know, you sit with a lot of psychology and then there's the law and then there's this interaction between the law and, and psychology. So it becomes a psychological fight rather than a legal fight at the end of the day. Bertus, I mean, family law is, I think, one of the most uh, difficult and most draining uh, of the legal uh, practices that, that there is. But from the mum's perspective, did she give any reasons as to why she was being so punitive and why she was alienating uh, the children from their dad? Um, obviously, yes, you know, and I don't want to divulge, of course, that's probably confidential information. But, you know, the moment that you disagree with um, eight mental health care practitioners, then the alarm bells go on. And, um, and you know, the contact was supervised as well. So it's not a matter of the children being in any danger when the father exercised the contact. Bertus, is this a first in the country, and what about uh, the world? Well, you, you know, in our law, um, you know, I wouldn't say our law is not on par with uh, foreign jurisdictions, but, you know, they have programs in place in the UK, for example, for parents that alienate children, and it's more of a conciliatory nature to see that, you know, uh, the parents can get back together and parent the, the children, but... I, I don't know of uh, a case where a mum has been jailed before. I know of cases where the parental rights of a mother was taken away. But, you know, you have to follow court orders. You can't just take the law into your own hands. And I think the judge made it very clear in this case that you can't purge your contempt. You have to then go back to court and apply for variation of the current order before you can act. 
Curtis, what was the demeanor, if you can tell us, um, of the mum when she, d she realized that she's going to have to spend her weekends in Polesmoor? Well, I must be honest, you know, after the, it, the judge made it quite clear um, that this was going to happen, I don't think the mother uh, or the legal team on the other side uh, had any, you know, way of bargaining in the, to the, in the sense that it was better to agree to the order because then at least um, the mother would not be imprisoned and it would afford them an opportunity to go back to court on an application um, stating the facts and then apply for a variation of the current contact regime. All right, thank you so much. Such an interesting precedent-setting case there. Thank you for joining us, Bertus Preller. That was family law expert.